When we talk about using the zoning code, one of the terms we've used a number of times already is the FAR, the floor area ratio. Uh, and it's an important concept. It's not always going to be called FAR. Some locations might uh, use a slightly different terminology, but most places will call it FAR. And it's the way of relating a site area. So if we have a site and we're going to build a building on it, we can say, all right, let's say we're going to build that building and footprint right there. And we want to control the overall mass of that structure. So we can relate the number of square footage of the floor, how many square feet of floor we have through this whole building. We can relate that to the area of the site. So we have the site area and we are relating it to the building area. And we put that as a ratio and then that is a very useful number for us to be able to say if the zoning department says you have a floor area ratio of two, that means that you can build uh, two times the site area of buildable enclosed interior area. Uh, and so if we want to have a really dense and big uh, buildings in a neighborhood, we could say, all right, that FAR wants to be 5 or 10 or 12. That means we'd be building 10 times, 5 times, 12 times uh, the area of the site, right? So that becomes a very big building. Uh, it could be that uh, we say, no, this area, this district wants to be a very low intensity, a very quiet, a very family-friendly place, a place where kids are running around the front yards. Uh, well, in that case, we might say, all right, instead of it being a, a 2 or 5 or, or 12 or something like that, uh, maybe the FAR is 0.5. Uh, where you know the total square footage we could build is uh, is half of the size of the of the lot. Maybe it's 0.25. Maybe it's uh, 0.1. Uh, that would require you to have a bigger lot uh, in order to have uh, any building at all on there. And so that's a way of controlling. Uh, that we uh, can kind of keep the riffraff out, right? It's sort of a, an old school way that, uh, that people used to control their neighborhoods uh, was by imposing these rules that would uh, sort of force people to have much bigger pieces of property, uh, which meant that you had to be reasonably wealthy in order to do that uh, for better or for worse. This concept of relating the buildable area to the site, what it's really about is relating uh, sort of the massing, the scale of something. And it's about making sure that air and light can sort of flow around a building and get to the neighbors. You know, if we think about this project, so what I've drawn here, maybe that's essentially a FAR of about one. So there's the square footage area of this whole site is demonstrated in this building. But you could also imagine that same project and you know maybe it's a two-story building taking up half of the site so we have a little bit of site area around we leave about half of the site open but we've got two floors well this is the same far Right? They both meet that FAR of one, and you see very quickly that the tall one is going to still let sunlight go sort of by the building because I have a lot of space around the building, and that sunlight's going to get to the neighbors, and you're going to get air moving through. And then this other one, it's much more of a massive building. It's much wider and has a bigger footprint, but in this case, the sunlight's going to go right over the top of that building because it's lower by sheer fact that it's being sort of designed by this ratio. We're sort of holding it to this ratio. So I can make it bigger and wider, but that means it's going to be lower. Or I can make it much, much taller, but that means the footprint's going to be smaller. So it's just a way of kind of controlling that mass while still leaving a lot of flexibility for how people want to use their property. In the old days, these things often went without any other restrictions. These days, there will probably still be some height restrictions and some other issues that get tied in with it as well, but it often didn't have that back in the mid part of the 20th century. One sort of important thing to know is that this is all about the 
building that's above grade. This is not something trying to hold back the scale of your building. You can actually build a very large building if you wanted to. It would just have to be below grade, which is obviously sort of ridiculous. So I could have many, many floors down below grade and it would not impact my FAR. The FAR is about the massing. And the reason for that is that it's about the neighborhood, right? It's not trying to control how big a building you build. It's trying to make the massing of the building in the neighborhood fit to the neighborhood and allow light and vent and all of those things and uh, sort of appropriate density to happen uh, in that upper uh, above grade uh, sense. Whenever you're talking about this, you're only talking about uh, the floor area that's above grade. As I said, uh, not everywhere in the country uses FAR, but it is sort of a generally understood way of uh, controlling that sense of mass and sort of finding ways that uh, everybody in the neighborhood is sort of being friendly to each other by allowing the people to do the tall building if they want, but then they forces them to keep it in from the property lines or allowing them to do the big wide building, but then it keeps it nice and low. Uh, either way, there's benefits uh, for the neighbors as well as freedom uh, for the actual owner.